Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We got a great topic today. We're going to teach you all about the flow volume curve interpretation in um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or what is kind of short form like COPD patient. Again, my name is Pramil Charyat. I'm a program director in internal medicine residency, transitional residency, and I'm a director of research, assistant professor of medicine, and I also teach uh, medical students and uh, uh, medical residents on a daily basis. So let's talk about like, um, you know, when it comes to COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, it's very important to know the pulmonary function test, especially the flow volume curve and how to interpret it. So we understand what exactly happening in the lung. Uh, anything you can express in the numbers, that means you understand the situation very well. When you talk about chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, let's say if you're preparing for a test or an examination, you're taking the class, Every question is going to be based on the flow volume curve or pulmonary function testing. Nobody is going to ask you, how do you manage, like uh, everybody know you manage pretty much by oxygen. You give, uh, you know, bronchodilator therapy, you give steroids, pretty standard, right? Everyone know that. But what is the problem people usually have? They have a problem understanding the flow volume curve. So <clears throat> we are today, what are we going to do today? We're going to teach you everything about the flow volume curve and what kind of question you can expect based on our famous uh, three curve method in COPD, pulmonary function, pulmonary, I mean flow volume curve, okay? So before we go into, it's good to understand some numbers and some names. You got functional residual capacity. <clears throat> you got that's between 1800 to 2200. You got total com total lung capacity. That's what you know stays in the lung. You got the vital capacity, which you ask the patient to take a deep breath and blow it out completely. And then you got expiratory reserve volume, inspiratory reserve volume, and the residual volume. Okay. <clears throat> so let's look at our um, first curve, curve number one. Uh, simple and no this is a normal. Um, curve right here kind of tell us about, um, you know, there is a, a tidal volume. This is what we breathe in and out. And then, then you have the vital capacity. You ask the patient to take a big deep breath and blow it out, okay? Then you have the expiratory reserve volume. The another important term you need to know is the residual volume. So what is residual volume? This is what remains in the lung, even if you try your maximum effort to blow it out, okay? Uh, some um, air still remains in your lung. That's what keeping your lung inflated. Otherwise, what's going to happen? Lung is going to be completely collapsed like a balloon after you take the air out. So um, in COPD patients, there's also a large air trapping. There's a loss of elasticity. So there's like a lot of air, I mean, still sitting in the patient um, in lungs. And if you add every, everything together, you get a good number that is called a total lung capacity. This includes residual volume also, remember that. <clears throat> so this is a, so you need to, when you come to COPD, focus on three main things. You look at the residual volume, that's going to increase, okay? Force well capacity, <clears throat> that can decrease or can sometimes can remain normal. Then you have the total lung capacity will be increased because your residual volume is increased. Okay, now the next thing, the next important curve is the flow. <clears throat> you got the volume on the x-axis, flow on the left, uh, left side. So you're asking the patient to take a deep breath and at the bottom is the inspiration. They take a deep breath and then come to the top. That's the expiration. You come all the way, then you exhale. You blow it out and then come and meet the curve, right? So you got the um, inspiration at the bottom and you got expiration on the top. And remember, always look at that residual volume on the right side. This is what remains inside the lung. Uh, it's very hard, it's kind of like estimated, like hard, very hard to measure. So patient take a deep breath and go up and then blow it out, okay? So force vital capacity, you can see the difference in that uh, slide right here. And then you look at the whole total lung capacity. This is a normal curve, remember that. And if you look at the top, that measures the peak flow, okay? So uh, what are the changes we can uh, expect? <clears throat> we come with a mnemonic for you, PCR virus TLC. So P is the peak flow. Let's look at the peak flow, that's at the top. Remember the peak flow? What's going to happen to the COPD? It comes down. So, and the other thing, you look at the concave. 
on the expiration. If you look at the um, expiratory side, which is on the top, the curve is kind of co come down like this, like a concave, right? So what happens is like the COPD people, when they take a deep breath and they try to breathe out, the airway start collapsing down. Um, so it, it kind of, that forms the pattern of the concave pattern. That's why we just kind of treat, uh, teach patients about firstly breathing and those kind of things, okay? So then we talk about the concave and the residual volume, another very, very important in COPD patient, residual volume increases, okay? So you see the residual volume kind of goes up. Always remember that if you have to take something, residual volume increases. And then look at the vital capacity. It may decrease or it may remain the same. And then the most important, you look at the total lung capacity. <clears throat> Since the residual volume increases, overall total lung capacity will increase, okay? So remember, if you can remember the mnemonic, I think it's very good. Now let's look at another curve, last curve. In this curve, it's called a volume time. Time is on the x-axis and volume on the left side. Then you can, I mean, you ask the patient, take a deep breath and blow it out and they measure in one second how much they expire. In this normal one, you can see FEV1 is kind of marked there, it's close to 4.2 liters, and then they try to blow it out, the force vital capacity, and then then exhale. The force vital capacity is around um, six liters. Okay, so what is our FEV1, FEC ratio? 4.2 divided by six, which is actually 70%. Now let's look at abnormal, what happened in the um, COPD patient or there's an obstructive disease. Rather than saying COPD, I think I should use obstructive lung disease, okay? Um, so FEV1, if you look at the FEV1, it decreased, right? And then FEC pretty much kind of remained the same or like maybe slight decrease. So FEV1, FEC ratio, three divided by six, so you get 50%, so decreased. So remember that in obstructive disease, this is what's a clear picture. So please use, remember all three curves. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, we will be back with a restrictive pattern soon. And please subscribe to our channel so we can produce more uh, informative videos like this. Again, thank you so much.